again, my name is uh, Carl Barth. I'm a structures faculty at West Virginia University, and I am a co-director of the Bridge Technology Center for the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, a free online design program for uh, bridges up to 140 feet called eSpan 140. If you've not used it before, it's a, quite a successful program for developing a preliminary uh, initial design for review and uh, also gives uh, information for uh, manufacturer solutions, contacts for fabricators, uh, et cetera. So if you're not familiar with short span bridges, but um, uh, are in a uh, design where you're evaluating steel. This allows you to uh, quickly produce a uh, design for it. I want to specifically say that uh, much of what I'm going to go through is what is currently available in the online eSpan 140 version. And there are some modifications to this, which will be rolling out uh, over the summer that provide some improvements and extend the range of applicability of this uh, set of standards. Additionally, I'll also uh, mention at the outset here, uh, we within the Alliance and the NSBA are working now with several states on the development of uh, similar standards that are specific and unique to a given state uh, criteria. So if you are uh, with a state DOT and uh, at the end of this, uh, have an interest in pursuing uh, that, I would suggest that you uh, reach out to Dan Snyder uh, or uh, one of the uh, NSBA uh, 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 people to get a little bit further information with that. So with that, uh, I'll go into this. Uh, today, I'm just going to introduce you to the criteria for which the uh, eSpan 140 uh, package is developed, and then I'll walk through a, a very quick uh, example of how this uh, software is utilized. And I think what you'll see at the end of this is that uh, within about five minutes and simply an understanding of the uh, bridge width and bridge span length uh, without any additional uh, knowledge about steel bridge design, you can get uh, a solution that's been vetted by the uh, by the industry to be uh, efficient, economical, and uh, and standardized. And so I'll go through that, and then I'll take any questions that you have uh, in the chat room, and I'll I'll be on for the full time. Uh, I'm going to try and make it through mine in about 20 minutes. That's about the fastest I've ever given a presentation uh, before in the past. So I'll quickly uh, set up and introduce you to, um, to the standards and, and how they were developed. And then again, I'll, I'll walk through uh, an example that utilizes the uh, free online tool, eSpan 140, to be able to produce a design. So when we were uh, working within the Alliance, and, and uh, the Alliance is comprised of uh, North American uh, steel producers, uh, fabricators, uh, other uh, agencies, owners, and engineers, and, and there is a working group that has come together to vet these design solutions. So these have been sort of normalized through uh, the in their industry standards process, if you would. At the time uh, we conceived of developing this program, we faced the fact that uh, many states had uh, existing concrete standards, but did not have steel standards. And so we were seeing that uh, concrete was being utilized more within the span range, simply because of the accessibility that engineers had to standardized solutions for concrete. And it was perceived that uh, going through the steel bridge design process was more complicated. So so uh, we wanted to uh, have an inroads around that and produce standardized designs for uh, steel bridge systems as well. So as you'll see when I go through the demonstration, uh, within a matter of minutes, you can have a solution for uh, a given bridge project. We wanted as an industry to make sure that these were economical. Uh, that we were able to expedite the design process and that we were able to use simple and repetitive uh, details and member sizes, uh, which uh, have far reaching economy in the overall uh, process and uh, life of the bridge. 
So this specific package, uh, eSpan 140, is developed for spans that are between 40 and 140 feet, and it provides uh, design solutions in five foot increments between each of those uh, span ranges. Uh, currently online, it gives uh, four girder spacings, uh, six feet, seven foot, five, uh, nine feet, and uh, 10 feet. Uh, but in the uh, upcoming uh, uh, version of this, the revision, there's uh, spacings every foot from six feet to 11 feet. And when you uh, produce the design, a package will be given. Uh, you see a, a PDF will get generated that it'll give you the uh, design details for the steel girders. It'll give you the shear stud and stiffener lift layout. And it'll provide all sorts of uh, welding fabrication details, uh, bearings, uh, concrete deck designs. And it'll also give you manufacturer solutions as well as uh, durability solutions and industry contact information. So essentially from the uh, bearing up through the uh, remainder of the superstructure, it'll give you the design details associated with that. Uh, again, in, in span increments of five feet between uh, 40 and 140 feet. It provides solutions uh, currently for both homogeneous and hybrid girders. The uh, hybrid girders are being uh, phased out in uh, revision. Uh, it was felt as an industry that there was simply not enough tonnage of uh, HPS 70 steel in these bridges to uh, validate the use of hybrid girders within there. Uh, many other design situations uh, it is significantly useful for. And it provides uh, rolled beam solutions uh, for both uh, lightest weight and uh, uh, limited depth solutions in there as well. The designs were uh, developed to accommodate uh, commonly available uh, both beam sizes and uh, plate sizes. This gives you an overview of both a cross section of the girder itself, showing you the uh, deck and haunch, uh, along with a generic cross section that was utilized in the development of uh, all designs. Uh, again, the design software is valid for any number of girders that you may have or any uh, out to out bridge facing that you may have, but the designs were developed based on a three lane roadway with uh, a five girder system and a three foot three overhang. I won't belabor the uh, design loads. You'll have that in the presentation, but suffice it to say, uh, normal unit weights were used and there were two concrete barriers that were used. All of those evenly distributed to uh, all of the girders uh, in there in uh, terms of developing uh, both the uh, DC1 dead loads, uh, DC2 dead loads, and then the uh, uh, wearing surface dead loads. So when you employ the software, you will see that based on the span range that you are uh, utilizing, it may give you one or multiple solutions within there for uh, either uh, rolled beams or uh, plate girders. Again, it also gives you manufacturer solutions and currently online, uh, there are solutions within given span ranges for press brake form tub girders as well. So if you run the uh, software, you'll see those come up as well. You'll see in one of these uh, webinar presentations information presented to you on the economy and efficiency of that system. So that sort of gives you a, a very quick overview of what was utilized in the development of the designs. Um, we've worked over the past month to develop some uh, design tools that are useful to rapidly produce a, uh, a range of designs given design uh, input and also then uh, have the capacity uh, to generate uh, Simon solutions for, uh, for any of these girders as well. So I'm just gonna walk you through very quickly an example project utilizing eSpan 140. And I think, again, what you'll see is that you 
if you do not have a background in uh, bridge design or steel bridges, uh, you don't need it to be able to utilize this and come up with uh, a standardized industry vetted solution for that. So the software is housed on its own website, uh, www.espan140.com. It can also be navigated through the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance website. And really there's just a, a very few steps to be able to uh, produce this solution. Once you get in the system, you need to create a user account. And once you've uh, uh, created a user account, you'll then see a uh, number of fields to enter your specific project information to. And I'll walk through those. And once you do, you'll simply hit go. And uh, in a matter of minutes, it will populate a PDF with a solution that's unique for your project. In your user account, you can save that solution. You can duplicate it and modify it and evaluate a number of different design scenarios if you uh, have the need to do so. And again, it gives you industry contact information so that you can reach out and have the ability to uh, get pricing uh, on these systems as well. So uh, once you're ready to develop a new project, you simply uh, hit the button, my projects, it'll take you to a field where you can start a new project. You come in and input your project uh, location information and you input the bridge span length, center line of bearing to center line of bearing. Now, again, remember I told you that it gives you solutions in five foot increments. So in this instance where this example bridge says it's 82 foot four inches, you will get the solution for an 85 foot bridge. If the design works for 85 foot, it works for 82 foot four. You can either increase your span minimally to the 85 feet or simply uh, cut the that girder dimensions down to 82 foot four, whichever works out best for your specific situation. You input a number of other additional fields to be able to set the out to out width of the bridge. You provide the number of striped lines. It assumes them all to be 12 feet. You input your uh, roadway width, you input your parapet width and your overhang. The program will then generate the fewest number of girder lines associated with those spacings that were provided to you that I mentioned up front, the four different girder spacings. So once you've input your span length and your uh, dimensions that define the out to out width of the bridge, the software will then look up the most economical solution, that being the one with the fewest girder lines for the some modifications we're looking at doing to this are adding options to do uh, odd or even numbers of girders so that you could have a girder at the center line for uh, future redecking, as well as looking at adding uh, three girder solutions to it as well for narrower bridges. You can input any information associated with sidewalks that you may have. And if you have one or two sidewalks and the width of those, again, those are all after generating the total out to out width of your bridge to determine that. You input uh, the skew angle information and your average daily traffic in there that gears you towards specific and unique manufacturer solutions that uh, our member partners have for associated uh, varying spans. Once you've done that and you tell it to go and it generates a PDF, I'll show you a series of partial information that you'll get out of the PDF. You'll see that it's populated with a significant amount of additional information above that than what I'll show you right here. But this provides you the general overall uh, elevation of the girder. And it has a table that is then populated with the flange sizes. Uh, if there's any uh, flange, potential flange transitions on them, the web size, any diaphragm spacing, if there are shear stiffeners required, and then the shear connector spacing within there. It also gives you uh, steel dead load and total dead load camber tables within there and defines everything about the design data 
for the uh, steel girder uh, system itself. There's also provided to you information associated with uh, fabrication details that are uh, uh, simplified and uniform. It provides information on uh, fabricating the steel girder, provides uh, sizes for uh, uh, bearing stiffeners, as well as uh, simple uh, and repetitive uh, diaphragm details. If you will go see many steel bridges, you'll oftentimes see just numerous types of diaphragms used and this eliminates that and use simple uh, standardized uh, diaphragm. This shows you uh, uh, information on uh, uh, diaphragms down there, and you would then see in your PDF solution a table of uh, different diaphragm sizes, depending upon the overall depth of your girder. Again, it gives you information from our member partners, the National Corrugated Steel uh, Pipe Associated Station, and it gives you uh, uh, buried steel bridge solutions within there uh, as well. Uh, in addition, it provides uh, manufacturer solutions from our member partners, provides information on uh, various durability solutions for the bridge, and again, provides you a, a contact list so that you have somebody to reach out to, to be able to uh, discuss your bridge project with. That is Eastband 140 in one minute under my 20 minutes. That's about as fast as I can, I can go. Uh, I know it's a very quick overview, but one thing I hope you did take away from that is it is really, really slick, uh, and uh, but oh so easy to use to get yourself a solution that has been uh, vetted by uh, every cog in the delivery engine of a, of a steel bridge. Um, so it's been used in over 6,000 bridge projects right now. Uh, if you've not used it before, take a look at it compared to one of your recent projects. And again, we are uh, working on developing now uh, state-specific standards uh, where we're up to uh, contact and engagement with four different states uh, right now in, in varying phases of discussion of developing standards similar to this, but unique to given uh, states criteria. And we have the ability to do that and produce those designs very rapidly, along with uh, generating Simon files for all of those designs. So again, I appreciate the time to present this to you. I take any questions, and if you have further uh, uh, information needs, please uh, reach out to NSBA or Dan Snyder, and uh, we'll be happy to circle back and, and follow up with you.